Three quarters of a billion kilometres away from the Earth lies one of the most magnificent sites in the solar system, Jupiter. It is the godfather of worlds, the oldest and largest planet in the solar system. It's two and a half times heavier than all of the other planets put together and could fit Earth inside over a thousand times. This size and mass gives Jupiter a powerful influence and this influence can be seen all over the solar system from the size and distribution of the rocky planets to the orbits of asteroid belts and debris. Around Jupiter, we've managed to identify no less than 79 moons orbiting the gas giant, more than any other planet. And of these 79 satellites, there's one place where the godfather planet's influence is spectacularly evident. Io. Io is a cold, scorched world. It is the most volcanically active celestial object in the solar system, and probably the closest thing to hell you can find in our immediate vicinity of space. It was discovered on the 7th of January 1610 by Galileo Galilei along with three other large moons of Jupiter. These Galilean moons were the first moons to be discovered beyond the Earth, which in turn helped humanity to realise that the planets orbit the Sun and not the other way around. At the time, the moons were distinguished by the numbers 1 to 4 in Roman numerals. However, as more moons were discovered around Jupiter, it became clear that the ever-expanding numbering system would become confusing. And so, we gave each of the four large moons names. Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, and last but not least, Io. Like most other moons, the name comes from Greek mythology. Io was a priestess of Hera and also one of Zeus's lovers who is said to have been turned into a cow during a marital dispute between Zeus and his wife Juno. In fact, NASA's 2011 Juno mission to Jupiter is named after her. This is because the Juno spacecraft peers through the clouds of Jupiter's upper atmosphere to reveal its secrets. In Greek mythology, Juno peered through the clouds to reveal her husband Zeus's, aka Jupiter in Roman mythology's, infidelity. In the last half a century, we visited the moon and its parent many times. Pioneer 10 and 11 were the first missions to take measurements of the moon and was followed by missions including Voyager, Cassini and New Horizons. This has allowed us to gain a much more in-depth look into the geology, chemistry and physics of the moon and we now know that Io has unique properties unlike anywhere else in the solar system. When these probes pointed their cameras at Io, they saw a chaotic, violent world. Io is the third largest moon of Jupiter, with a respectable diameter of 3,643 kilometres. It is the fourth largest moon in the solar system, and is slightly larger than Earth's moon. It is the innermost of the large moons, and as such it is subjected to intense gravitational pressure and heavy irradiation for its parent planet. Most large moons in the solar system are composed of silicates and water ice, but Io is composed of silicate rock making it much more similar in composition to the rocky planets than the moons. This composition also makes it the densest moon in the solar system. Its crust is about 50 kilometers thick and is tormented by massive lakes of molten silicate lava on the surface. This is driven by the mantle below. While mostly solid, it is a liquid near the crust. This gives the moon a global subsurface ocean of molten silicate magma, rising up via any available route or fault from the core, which causes the surface to bulge as high as 100 meters in some places. This ocean is the source of the magma erupting onto Io's surface and gathering into great lava lakes. Data from the Galileo satellite has indicated that further down, Io may have an iron-rich or iron-sulfide core about 1,500 kilometers in diameter, which would give Io its own magnetic field. On the surface, Io is extremely geologically active, but despite this constant emission of heat, the planet remains cold. This far away from the Sun, its average temperature is about 110 Kelvin, because the planet lacks an atmosphere substantial enough to trap heat. Io's atmosphere is a very thin layer of sulphur dioxide as a result of the volcanic activity, with traces of sulphur monoxide, sodium chloride and atomic level sulphur and oxygen. This atmospheric composition varies significantly depending on the time of day, latitude and surface frost levels. It can be as weak as a third of the pressure of Earth's atmosphere, or it can be as strong as three times the pressure. Extreme pressure and sub-zero temperatures aside, there are volcanoes and lava lakes dotted all over its uneven rocky terrain. 
The surface is constantly being reshaped by this volcanism, and Io has over a hundred mountains which have been uplifted by compression at the base of Io's silicate crust. Some of these mountains are taller than Everest. Of course mountains are one thing, but what really sets Io apart from the rest of the solar system's moons are its 400 active volcanoes, making it one of only a handful of active moons in the solar system, and by far the most violent and extreme. Volcanoes on Io erupt lava rich in sulphur and magnesium dozens of kilometres into the air, and plumes of sulphur and sulphur dioxide as high as 500 kilometres. These volcanic depressions are connected and joined by massive lakes of silicate lava. The largest is Loki Patera, which is over 200 kilometres across, one million times larger than any lake we have on Earth, and single-handedly responsible for 25% of all of the heat emitted by the Moon. With erupting mountains and vast lava flows, Io is truly a sight to behold. But why is it that this moon is so volatile and volcanic, and none of the others that we know of are? Well, to find the answer to that, you have to look beyond the moon itself. On Earth, our geological activity is driven from below. The leftover heat from the Earth's formation and radioactive decay at the core drives convection currents upwards. On Io, however, this hellish activity is driven from above, by the gravity of its parent planet. Io is constantly under pressure from Jupiter's immense gravitational and magnetic fields, and this is the source of the havoc on the surface. Io orbits Jupiter quickly, once every 42 and a half hours to be exact, which is also the same amount of time it takes the moon to complete one full rotation, and so its day is the same as its year, meaning one side of the moon always faces Jupiter, while the other faces out into space. It is tidally locked, like many other moons. This moon around the gas giant is also the subject of a tug-of-war match between Io's neighbours and its parent. Io is locked into what's known as an orbital resonance with its neighbouring moons Europa and Ganymede. Like planetary clockwork, Io completes two full orbits of Jupiter for every one of Europa, and four full orbits for every one of Ganymede. This means that every few orbits, the moons align, and the gravity of Io's neighbours pulls it out of its circular orbital alignment and into an elliptical orbit and this means that the strength of Jupiter's gravitational influence on the Moon is constantly changing, pulling on the Moon's interior and squashing it. This causes tidal heating. The changing gravity of Jupiter, Europa and Ganymede causes friction on Io's interior which generates heat, raising the temperature of Io's mantle to over a thousand degrees, which would usually be frozen. This heat melts the mantle near the surface, causing geological activity that is responsible for the many mountains, volcanoes and lava lakes on the surface. As it travels along this elliptical orbit, Io cuts across the powerful magnetic lines of Jupiter's magnetic field, meaning Io is a hive of electrical activity and radiation. The Moon can create an electric current of over 3 million amps, and this causes lightning in Jupiter's upper atmosphere when the Moon passes close by the planet. As the Moon moves through these massive channels of radiation, these magnetic field lines rip across the surface like electromagnetic tornadoes, and the irradiation from the gas giant strips off approximately a ton of material every single second. This displaced debris becomes ionised by the magnetic field and forms a cloud around Io, which feeds into a much larger rotating cloud of extreme radiation around Jupiter, known as a plasma torus. The ions in this cloud have inflated Jupiter's magnetosphere to over twice the size we would expect, thanks to the extra matter from Io. As the planet and Taurus rotate, some of these ions fall into Jupiter's upper atmosphere, creating brilliant and bedazzling aurorae. On Earth, the northern lights are caused by solar storms hitting the planet's magnetic field lines, but Jupiter is powerful enough to create its own, as its gravity pulls charged particles inwards, creating aurorae hundreds of times more energetic than the ones we see on Earth. Yet another one of Jupiter's most impressive features which is driven by its most extreme conditions. Most of what we need to know about Io was revealed by the Galileo spacecraft between 1995 and 2006, and then in 2007 New Horizons revealed the Moon's surface in fantastic new detail. But because Io is so harsh and barren, it's not really a viable target for any landing missions. But with that said, in 2010 and 2015, a flyby mission to Io called the Io Volcano Observer, or IVO, was proposed as the subject for NASA's 13th Discovery mission, and also the New Frontiers program. This mission would aim to investigate the impact of Io's volcanoes on the rest of the Jupiter system. 
Unfortunately, however, like many proposed satellite landing missions, the IVO and a similar proposed flyby mission have yet to make it past the proposal stage. What is more intriguing to scientists are missions that explore the system of Jupiter as a whole, and there are multiple proposed missions to explore the Jovian satellites, but Io is of little interest to scientists compared to moons like Europa, which are predicted to have potentially life-bearing properties. It goes without saying that Io's conditions make it a very unlikely spot for any sort of life. Io is, in all likelihood, a lifeless, troubled world, irradiated and scorched well beyond the habitable threshold. In fact, these extreme conditions have made Io a feature in numerous instances of popular culture, with a long list of appearances in video games, from Halo to Destiny 2. It was also the subject of a film on Netflix released just last year with said name, about a space station of surviving humans on Io after the atmosphere of Earth has become toxic. In reality, Io's surface conditions make it perhaps one of the least well-suited environments for human colonies. If we needed to escape the Earth and form a colony around Jupiter, many have proposed another of the Galilean moons as a prime target, the only one we haven't mentioned today, Callisto. While Callisto's conditions are deemed to be less favourable to the emergence of life than Europa's, it is the least affected of the four large moons by the radiation of its parent planet, and so a milder environment may be the best place for a human or remote presence for the exploration of the system in the future. For Io, however, it likely won't be the focus of a landing mission anytime soon, if ever. We will continue to peer in from the safety of space, as nothing would be able to survive on that barren and ravaged moon. As for the survival prospects on the other large moons of Jupiter? Well, that's a question for another day. <laughs>